Hey everybody, my name is Lola. I'm a permanent makeup specialist. I'm a trainer as well as an artist. This is my first video with myself in it. Um, I wanted to start introducing my face to you guys, who I am, a little bit more about my personality so that we can get to know each other better. Today's video, as you can read in the title, will be all about my tips on how to become a successful microblading lash artist, permanent makeup technician, whatever your craft is. I'm going to be talking about the tips that helped me and the reason why a lot of my success happened in a shorter time and I was able to do this. I originally started doing uh, permanent makeup from the age of 18 and the first time that I took a course I was not intending to make this a full-time gig let alone ever open a salon one day. I never thought I would be in the beauty industry but it has a way of reeling you in and I love what I do now. I love the fact that I get to meet all kinds of people every day and now even this is happening so hey it starts from one thing. However when you're a beginner uh, and you take a course, you're fresh out of a course, or you've been doing it for some time, but you're still kind of lost. There's a lot of people, especially even trainers, that will tell you, oh, go, be successful, dream on, but they never actually tell you how to become more successful in the industry. So I'm here to tell you. From my perspective, it may not all work with you, you may not agree with all of it, but at least coming from a very genuine place of what worked for me, what I recommend for you in today's world. Let's talk about my first tip for you, uh, practice. Practicing is everything. Practicing your craft not only helps you in, in getting better at what you want to do, but also helps you to really pinpoint and focus on what you feel like needs more work. And whether it's on a real human, a live model, paper, latex, mannequin, practice. Because when you practice, you'll find out what still needs more work. And if, let's say for the example of doing eyebrows, whether you're not very good at shaping right now, you can practice on paper, you can practice on your son at home, you can practice on your boyfriend, your friend, your mom, whoever you can pull for five minutes to practice that shape. So that when it comes to an actual paying client, a paying stranger, you're not completely lost. You don't feel as unconfident as you would if you hadn't practiced. Don't just practice the actual craft though. Practice the smoothness of your appointments. Say you're a beginner, but you're a little bit nervous at first, which is totally expected. You're just beginning. This is a brand new skill you're learning. It's okay to be nervous, but what's not okay is for you to not take initiative playing almost like a role play of how your appointments would go. Grab someone off the street or grab one of your friends or family members and tell them, hey, come to my workplace, whether that's from home or whether you work out of a salon, and that you don't know them. So when they walk in through the door, you would carry out that conversation as if you would carry it out with a stranger or a client. Practice how you greet your clients, practice how you introduce yourself, practice where you direct them to go or where to sit. Then when you're explaining the procedure, the differences between procedures of what you're doing, the benefits of your procedures, the healing, the aftercare, everything that has to do with an appointment, sometimes these little details go unnoticed and when you're in the appointment, you realize, oh crap, I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm starting to stutter now. I'm starting to sweat. I'm visibly nervous in front of my client, which is a big no-no. When you're nervous in front of your client, it makes your client feel nervous. And put yourself in your client's shoes. You want to go to a technician that knows what they're talking about, that knows what their craft is. They take charge. They tell you how it's going to go down that day. They tell you what they recommend for you and you wholeheartedly trust them. You leave it in their hands because you know they know what they're talking about. You want to be that person for your clients. You want to instill trust in them, confidence in them. So that as soon as they instantly walk in through the door, the vibe that they get from you is confidence. Someone who they're able to trust with their face essentially. Practice your microblading hair strokes, practice your lashes, practice your makeup, practice whatever your skill is. Even if you're having a dead month, you're not really having too many clients, you don't really have too many gigs going on, that's fine. Pull someone, anyone you can and practice whatever you need to practice. That way you can also pinpoint what needs more work. That's your first tip. The second tip for you today is going to be to stay up to date. This is a bit of a broad category, but it's really important that you as an artist, as a technician, 
you have to stay up to date on what's new in your industry, what new products have come out, what new techniques have come out. The reason why is because even if you don't want to provide the newest technique or the newest product out there, you should know and be aware of it so that in the event that a client comes in through the door and says, hey, I know you do microblading, but I heard about this new thing called nano brows. I was wondering if you offer that and what do you think? Or I was wondering if we could switch to nano brows today. The reason why it's important for you to know a little bit better on what the different techniques are, not only to offer them, which can expand your services, but also to say, hey, you know what? I agree with you, client. I'm so glad you brought that up. Here's why I don't think it's a better option for you. Or here's why I do think it's a better option. Or here's what my thoughts on that procedure or that technique is. Whether it's a new product or as a makeup artist, I'm not a makeup artist, but if someone comes in to do my makeup or if I hire somebody for them for my makeup, I want them to know the newest products, the newest techniques, so that when they do provide me with that service, I know I'm getting the best and the latest. It's so common, it's something so obvious to do as a technician, but a lot of people, they learn what they need to and then they stop they kind of hone in on whatever they've already learned and then they try to just stay in that lane they never go progressing to the next thing or the newest thing brand new example let's say you want to get your floors you go to someone who specializes in doing floors and you say to them hey i heard about this new type of laminate it's supposed to look like real wood do you offer that or do you have that and they're like hmm i don't know about that actually um no, but you know what I do have? I have this one that I've had for 10 years and I have the other one that I've had for five years. Which one do you prefer? Instantly, you'll think, oh, okay, well, thank you so much for your time. I will get back to you because you've lost confidence that that person is the one that is always up to date, that has refreshed their techniques, that has refreshed their ideas of what's newest on the product market. You don't want that person to do any kind of service for you. That's how I think about it at least. When you are providing a service to people, you want to give them confidence that you're giving the best out there that is today. Even if there is a new technique or product that you don't totally agree with or you don't want to offer or you can't afford to take a course on right now, know about it. Know about it, study it, so when your client comes in, you're not A, left looking sloppy for not knowing the newest stuff in your field, B, even if your client doesn't ask you about it, it's just better for you as someone who is a technician running your own business to know about everything that's out there in your industry. It's only fair that you do that for your clients. The third thing is a little bit close to what I've just talked about. The biggest tip I can give to anybody, the reason why I've gotten this far is self-teaching. I will be the first one to say to you, take trainings, yes, increase your skills, get more certificates, hang more things on the wall with your name on it. But at the same time, taking a course, not the same as you having the initiative, the drive in you to always teach yourself new things. You can learn one part of a craft and say, hmm, okay, I think I understand how that works. And then go home, watch videos, Google it, go on Instagram and practice it yourself and teach yourself a whole new thing. I'm not recommending that you do new techniques without certifications, but I am recommending you to learn one thing and get better and better and better and self-teach yourself other ways of doing it, other ways of practicing or other ways of offering that service. You can branch off into many different avenues if you just do that one thing, self-teach. The main reasons why I became busy quite soon after taking a course, which is not very common for a lot of people in any industry, is because I self-taught a lot of the stuff that I know now. It was unfair to me as a beginner for someone to have offered a course that didn't include all the right information that I needed to know. They kind of gave me the basics and the one, two, threes of it, but it didn't really go into details how my work will look two years later. Why does it look like that? How does the healing actually work? Why does the healing look the way it does? In terms of shaping, how do I deal with different faces and how do I deal with different skin types? Why is it so important? How do I mix color? How is color theory important to my line of work? When I can just pick up a brown, this is a brown, why do I need to know what the undertone is? How it's gonna react with this person's skin type? These things are all things that you may have learned through a course, but for me, none of that was taught. I could have easily been one of those people to say, hey, you know what? This is too hard for me. There's just too much that I don't know. I, I don't know how to keep going because all these clients are complaining to me, especially as a beginner when you don't have too much confidence and you have complaints or unhappy clients, 
you may lose confidence in pursuing that craft or pursuing that career because thinking, oh my God, this is so much harder than I, oh no, how am I ever gonna get clients? Look at this person, she's already unhappy. Imagine doing this forever. If I had stuck into that mindset and I never told myself, this can't be the only answer. This can't be the only way of doing it. I wouldn't be where I am today. And that applies to everything. If I don't understand something, I will go research it more, understand it, watch videos, see how other people are doing it and self-teach myself. Girl, when you know one skill, it's easier for you to take that skill and just get better or learn new skills because your hand has adapted, your hand-eye coordination is already there. You're already used to learning something from the start, even though it may feel awkward and unnatural at first, but you can get better by practicing. All of it comes from the drive to self-teach yourself. This is again, not to take away credit from actual certifications. I do advise you always continue taking courses, to always continue attending conventions. You're gonna meet people around the world that you may not have heard about their technique before, but it's interesting to you. Always take certifications, take new courses, take new classes. I don't ever recommend that you take everything just from YouTube and start doing procedures on other people or even on yourself always have certifications but once you have one or two certifications continue to build from there you already have one skill one piece of paper that's going to validate your knowledge but continue from there don't ever stop so my fourth tip for you guys is going to be to get inspiration as you all know social media is one of the top pillars of success for the beauty industry the main thing that i want you to take away from social media that i want to talk about now is to get inspiration from other people when i look at accounts where their work is already at the level i want to be at or their success level is already where i want to be at what i take from those accounts and those people even if it's nothing to do with my industry someone who just simply inspires me i will examine and study why they inspire me what is it that they have lured me in with or what is it that attracted my attention in the first place because we often forget on our social media when we're uploading or when we're actually promoting our services we forget that we're also consumers at the end of the day so as a consumer when you're watching a tv commercial what is it that made you pay attention to that tv commercial what is it about that instagram post that you made you click on it and like it what is it that that person's video had that made them go viral study these things get inspiration from other people's social media for example, let's say you see a picture of a before and after of eyebrows that you really like and you clicked on it instantly as soon as you went on that person's profile. So let's say you did that. Let's say you took a picture that you like that inspires you. I want you to save that, screenshot it. I want you to study it right then and there and see what it is that you like about that, that picture. Was it the way she took the angles of her client? Was it the way she edited it? Was it the lighting? Was it the actual work itself? What about the work intrigued you? Or is it that it was so bad that you were thinking, oh my God, I don't wanna do this with my pictures or my clients. Take what you can from every photo, from every profile. What I wanna really clearly distinguish is I don't want you to copy other people. I don't want you to copy other people's work. What I want you to do is take that inspiration from their profiles, from their work, from their art, and add your own twist to it, and then produce something that you can call your own, that you can take credit for. Oftentimes, when I see people copying exactly the way that somebody posts or exactly the way that they edit their pictures or exactly the same way that they do their work, whatever it might be, Copying it is always going to be obvious and it's never gonna come from the heart You're never gonna enjoy doing it because it's not who you are throughout your entire process of building a portfolio Always give something to your clients that can right away say oh, I know whose profile that is You know why because that's the way that she posts her pictures. You know why because that's how her eyebrows look You know why because that's how she does her captions I want you to always make yourself personable and rememberable to other people on social media, to the random stranger walking down the street. You wanna give them something to remember you by. So yes, get inspiration from other profiles, get inspiration from other people's work. Take the good parts, inspire yourself, and then add your own twist to things and then upload it or make it your own or call it your own, put your own watermark on it. You have to be yourself. We're so lucky to live in this era where our industries or many industries across the world have become really successful purely because of social media or mainly because of social media. Thanks to Instagram or Google or Twitter, whatever it might be that helps your business, you're reaching a lot more people than what people used to achieve back in the day. Back in the day, if you want to get a service done, you walk out, you go to the nearest place and ask what they offer as a service. Now 
nowadays you can go on instagram find someone in a different country and be like you know what that person is so good that it's worth it i'm gonna go travel to this person in this country to get this service done that would have never been possible back in the day so utilize that your instagram is your portfolio think of instagram as your magazine when you look through a magazine you only see the best of the best so when it comes to your social media treat it like your magazine only produce the best pictures take the best angles of your clients make sure when you're working on your clients, remember that the results that you produce on your clients also represent you just like a magazine when you upload it on your profile you want to make sure you're showcasing the best of your work i want to really really emphasize that your social media is going to be one of the main things that make or break your business as soon as you look at so someone's social media you can tell what kind of person they are i don't know if you can but whenever i look at someone's social media whether it's a blogger an influencer someone who does the same work as me i can tell what kind of person they are purely because of how much attention they put into the little details on their profile whether it's the way you edit your photos whether it's the way that you, you create very witty long interesting captions or the way that you market yourself, why all a lot of your videos or photos are going viral. You can tell how much work has gone into that profile just by looking at it for the first three minutes. Another thing you can do with your social media is to create a community. You want to create a community with your surrounding artists in the area, surrounding businesses in the area, or people around the world that do similar work to you. Reason why is because let's assume that you follow somebody in your area that does the same thing that you do follow them like their pictures better yet comment on their pictures leave comments because a potential client that was looking at their profile for their services that they offer same as you will look at those pictures and see you in the comment section likes are not always so possible because likes you have to click on the like section of a picture to be able to see who liked it when you comment when you leave a comment especially when you leave a comment praising that person's work saying good job heart face amazingly done that picture is going to show your comment automatically when the next potential client is also looking at it they'll look at it and be like hmm that's interesting it says uh browse by lola also commented on this let me click on them and see who they are they click on you they find out you're also in the area or they find out you do the same similar similar line of work that's going to attract a potential clients to your page b by leaving comments showing praise to other people you're creating a community where not only do you give that to people but they give it back to you just like any other workplace you want your workplace to be filled with people that support you that give you good feedback that always praise your work any chance that they get because that makes you feel better about yourself it makes you want to do more of your work it makes you want to show up to work essentially so your work showing up to work would be showing up to instagram let's say you create a very nice workplace for yourself where all the people that you work with or all the clients that you have are very engaged on your profile to have that be done onto you, you must provide it to other people first. You have to take the first step. Follow other people in the same industry or similar industries or similar area. Like them, comment on them, leave good feedback and watch. I guarantee you, you will have the same returned onto you. By creating a community, you're a getting potential clients that are also looking at their profile to now look at your profile. B, you're also look, allowing yourself to create a very warm, hospitable, friendly community for yourself, almost like a workplace. Nobody ever wants to go to a workplace that brings them anxiety, depression, makes them feel bad about themselves. So create that workplace for yourself. Take that initiative. You can run a few other things on your social media. So another tip would be to host giveaways, to host promos. The reason why I like giveaways so much is because they attract so many people to your profile and for a good reason because you are giving away a very valuable service or product for free. Who doesn't like free? People run at the word free. They will do anything. So if all they need to do is tag three people and follow you to get something for free that's worth 400 bucks, 600 bucks, they'll do it, honey. They will do it. In doing a giveaway, you might be thinking, yeah, but I don't want to give away free time, free product, um, when I could be making money off that sale or service. I understand that aspect, but think of it as a free marketing tool. So when you do a giveaway, let's say you're giving away a service that's worth $400. Let's say that you tell people who want to enter this giveaway to tag three people in the comment section to follow you. Whatever it is, you require them to A, increase your following, B, like this photo, 
spread the word, post you on their story or profile. This gets the word out to a hundred other people. Let's say for this giveaway, you told people, tag three people, like my picture, and follow my profile. By doing that, you're increasing how many people are now attracted to your profile. Even if that person tagged three people that will never come to you or buy your product or services, those three people now know about you. They know who you are, they've heard of your name. So one day, you never know, it might become useful. You can get more followers this way. You can get more people knowing about you and what service you offer. So your word spread. Instead of paying Instagram $300 or $400, which is whatever your service is worth, you're doing it for free, essentially. Yes, you might be losing product by offering a service for free, but you're gaining so much more in return. So don't ever look down upon giveaways. They work like a charm. Another tip I can give to you guys is, let's say you're having a slow month or a slow time where you're just a beginner, don't lower your prices because it automatically shows people that you're not performing well. For whatever reason it might be, you don't want to lower your prices because it lowers your value. Always keep your prices the same, if not increase them from time to time. But the way that you can kind of push a little bit of business on a slow month is to do promos. Promos work really well. And you can always find an excuse for a promo. Any month of the year, you can find an excuse for a promo. Say this is October right now. I could say Halloween promo. Get your eyebrows done in, in time for your Halloween costume. Or just because it's Halloween, I'm gonna do a fall festive uh, promo or Thanksgiving promo or New Year's promo, Christmas promo, holiday promo. There's always a reason to host a promo. So don't think that you have to wait for times like Black Black Friday or um, holiday season at any point throughout the year you can host a promo now by doing a promo you can say instead of my regular rate of 600 I'm offering a promo of $500 limited spots only you have to make it feel very exclusive so that people actually make that hasty decision to go ahead and book with you once you have them booked then the rest becomes a little bit easier because now you've guaranteed that spot for them. Do a promo instead of ever lowering your prices. Lowering your prices always lowers your value. It looks bad on you and even though you might think people are not catching on to why you're doing it, they're catching on. So never lower your prices, always host promotions. The last point that I wanna to touch up on is something that people often forget. When you're providing a service similar to my field, microblading, uh, powder brows, lashes, beauty, makeup, whatever it might be, you're in the category of additional spendings. This is not necessarily a service that people cannot live without. For some, they may not. But what I mean is people need housing first, they need food first, they need cars first. So any additional beauty services are an extra income type of base clientele. When people have extra income, they will spend their money on services like yours. Because you're in the luxurious services industry you have to provide luxury to your clients when you don't provide a luxurious experience you can't justify the prices you're charging if you want your clients to pay premium prices you've got to provide them with a premium experience the little things count even if you're you're providing a service where 50 other people just in your own area are doing the same exact service set yourself apart provide luxury Starting from your environment, let's say you have a room that you do out of from your home, or let's say you have your own salon or you work out of a salon, make your space fully provide and represent you in a luxurious way. It starts with your environment, make it smell good, make your place look tidy and clean, not so bizarre and weird colors and funky looking. Make sure that your clients are always coming into nice sounding music, the ambiance is very important. Even if you're doing it from home, I did my job from home for almost four years. I never once let my clients see a family member. Not because I don't love my family, all love to them. If you want to provide a luxurious service, you don't want your client to come in thinking, oh, hey, Lola's mom, I'm um, gonna go get my brows done in that other room. See you later. It's a little bit awkward. So it starts with your environment. Work on your environment first. Make sure that when you come in there as a stranger, you would wow yourself too. The second thing that you wanna provide luxury with, make sure you have high quality tools. Make sure you use high quality pigments, lashes, makeup, whatever your industry requires, get the best of the best. But I do recommend that you invest in your products because your products will yield better, better results. 
when you yield better results you can justify why you're charging how much you're charging another aspect of luxury comes from what you give to them to take home let's say if you're a brow artist you want to give them an aftercare kit that actually has a lot of value to it I hope you guys like my video today. I know I tend to blabber a lot. This is my first time doing a video with my face on, so please leave me any of the opinions or comments down below. I love to read and I always try to get back with whatever I can help with. But I hope today was a little bit useful for you. If you're just starting out, please don't give up. There's a lot to be learned in the industry, but it all starts with you. Like I said earlier, you can always self-teach yourself whatever you need to work on. Don't ever stop. Bye.